Hi everyone, I'm Alessia and I do my PhD in Cognitive Neuroscience of Language. Today I thought I could share with you some of my thoughts about mentoring because that is something that's transversal over academia and also elsewhere that might be applicable to you whether you are doing your PhD currently or you are just considering doing it. I guess academia is the place where you always seek for mentors. That's the part that I partially covered in one of my previous videos when I talked about mentorship and my own experience of finding mentors, short-term mentors, peer mentors longer term mentors and today I actually have a meeting with my mentor but in this video I decided to concentrate on the topic of mentoring others one of the very interesting skills that you can acquire is actually to mentor others to supervise other students teaching versus mentoring or rather I'd say teaching versus supervision uh, teaching being a quantity versus supervision being a quality. At some point, for example, when you acquire new skill, filmmaking, quantity is the key. By creating more videos, you get to know how to do better storytelling, you learn how to edit and market your videos as well. You bring all of those skills to a new level by just practicing. But at some point, you've got to concentrate on one thing, stick to it and improve it. Concentrate on the quality as well. It's like this approach of going extensively versus going intensively and just deepening your knowledge about one thing. With your effort, I think it's crucial to not to put all the eggs in the same basket. Teaching is a great opportunity to work on that you can help all the people at once and those who are gonna be interested they could approach you and ask for more mentoring they could ask for more tips a general advice on academia or whatever they need so I think for me that's something to consider In a short series of lectures, I heard about this social science study. The researchers looked at the way by which the, the professionals or experts were different from the novices or beginners. To do that, they just took the university professors who were representing the expert group and university students at the same faculty of physics in the same university and they compared their strategies of problem solving. And it turns out that the first thing that the experts do, even before starting to go deep into the numbers, they are not trying to find an answer right away. What they're doing is they zoom out, they look at the general picture, and they almost try to categorize this problem in one of their mental boxes, each corresponding to a certain law of physics or a certain way to solve a problem. Once the problem is in this box, the only thing that they need to get the final result is to simply calculate it. So their tactics is to actually find a, a useful strategy for this problem and then simply deal with it, whereas the students moved into their attempts to solve the problem right away. That all brings me to this whole idea that the way is not supposed to be simple, it's not supposed to be easy, but it has to be more or less transparent in a sense that you should have an idea of how to solve this problem, of how to get to the final result. Now, look at your supervisor. How different are they as compared to you? What do they do differently? For example, I find that mine 
always tries to zoom out of the particularities to her bigger picture, to her bigger understanding of how the world is functioning. She's thinking systems, she's thinking models, meaning that she always gets it. She connects the dots like the most other people cannot. She may listen to a topic that's quite unrelated to what she's usually doing or that's completely outside the scope of her work, but she would still grasp the main idea and comment on it. She would put this idea of the talk into her common knowledge, into the system that she already has in her head, as if she would categorize the whole incoming stream of the information into her own mental boxes. Well, as I'm saying it now, it also reflects somehow a stereotypical thinking when we just simply put all the world into boxes, right? But it also allows you to grasp the main idea and then move on into onto details only when necessary. I also think that's a major skill that I'm learning here during my PhD. For example, when I do a literature review, I need to do an overview of what's happening around my field in order to find a basic idea or a basic direction of where to go. And then I do go and dig deeper in order to identify if that idea has already been put in place or not. Or a different example. For instance, I present the results of my study and instead of wasting time on the additional analysis that at the end might not even work, the first thing I do is a big overview of the, pre of the preliminary results just to kind of get the idea of what my results are like. And this might give me more ideas on how to interpret my data and how which analysis to do that would just show me the direction of where to go and therefore raising the quality of my analysis or literature review or whatever it be. What do you think of it? Do you consider it to be unprofessional? Or do you think that's a working strategy to go from quantity to quality? Please let me know in the comments and I'll see you very soon in the next video.